Hello everyone. Uh, today I will talk about uh, a case that I have with my client previously. Uh, it's about flexible authorization. Before that, uh, my name is Giovanni. Uh, this is my Twitter handle and my GitHub account. Currently, I'm associated with two uh, different company, but we're doing uh, mostly enterprise development for uh, our client in Indonesia. So I'm from Jakarta, Indonesia. Uh, it's about an hour and 30 minutes from Jakarta to Singapore. And we also have a local Ruby community called ID Ruby here uh, in Jakarta. And I also help organize there. Uh, okay, let's back to the topic about flexible authorization. Uh, I want to point, about, point out about the flexible part first. Uh, why is flexibility necessary? I think uh, it's because for future improvement and because my blood type is O. Okay. <laughs> uh, actually, it's because uh, several years ago, uh, I, I have a, a requirement from my client. Uh, the conversation goes like this. Uh, so at that time, I used CanCan -can or Pandit. And uh, he said that, can you make something like this? And then I, I need to hack the source code a bit. And then I have to hand it over back to them. It goes like this, but after several uh, go, going back and forth, he, he asked something like this. Can you just give me a nice interface to work with? At that point, I realized that the current, uh, the current authorization game like CanCan -Can and Pandit, it doesn't really give a framework for us to storing the, the rules and authorization in database. Uh, we have to modify the, our source code before we can uh, give it back to them. So this is actually a work in progress. Uh, I'm still improving my uh, system in our application. Uh, but before I talking about the step, let me first talk about the, the subsystem of authorization. So if it, we're talking about authorization, there is actually a four parts of, of subsystem, regulating, collecting, evaluating, and enforcing, or scoping. Uh, I will use a diagram to help you understand this. For first time, if we have an application, we have to regulate our, all of our rules or policies into the into database or other data store, or maybe on your source code. You have to uh, create rules like user A may access uh, X or user B may access Z, something like that. And then after you regulate all your rules into the data store, uh, you will encounter something like this. You have an application where your application uh, try to ask to the system, can I, can I read this document? So your user accessing your application, then he, he wants to know whether he can read this document or not. And th this is called the enforcing or scoping. So the enforcer will, will go to the evaluating part, and the evaluating will collecting all the necessary rules and uh, policies from the database or data store. After that, it will be returned, and the evaluating will go to the enforcing part, and the enforcing will tell the user that, OK, you may read this document, or you may not read this document. So it goes like this. And we also have to understand the elements of authorization. Subject, action, object, resource, and environment. So if you go, if you go here, can I read this document? I is the, I is the subject. Read this document is the uh, resource or the object. Uh, this document is the object, and read is the action. So it, like that, the, the elements. So I will focus first on the regulating part. Uh, this is what I use for my uh, system right now. So actually, it's not really different. But if you notice that there is uh, more columns on the activities part, or you, you may call it privilege or uh, permission, something like that, I add three more objects, which is uh, actions, objects, and condition. Uh, currently, we, uh, we use JSON B for action and condition. Uh, we will put our regulation inside the activities and in the roles. You may wonder what, what we will uh, put in the condition and activities. Uh, we, we put something like this. So actions, for example, read. And the object is document. And then the condition is object state approved. So if you notice the, the previous case where my client asked me for, I can only see the approved document. The rules are like this. And uh, bottom is the same. So it's just a different variant. You can also do something like this. This is actually a 
Polish notation. It's similar to LISP, the LISP that we uh, see at the previous talk, like this. And this one is the operator. We can also do something like this. So it's a nested condition. You can do N and R. And after we store all of our regulation, we, we can give a nice interface for user for them to create the rules by themselves. So we, we may not uh, modify the source code anymore. Um, our implementation is something like this. So you have a, like a query DSL generator, and then you have a live preview on the bottom of the, on a, on the, bottom of the query generator. And after that uh, comes the more easier part, the collecting part. So this is actually not the collecting part. This is the enforcing part. But you notice something like this. This one, if in Pandit, it will go to an application policy, and I put something like this. So it can collect all the activities about the document, and I want to see whether the user have activities related to destroying the document. After we create, collect all the activities, comes the evaluating part. It's uh, actually just we parse the conditions tree that we already created uh, in the DSL, like this. And after we evaluate the condition uh, tree, like, we can then use the pandit or kankan to enforce. For example, if comes a request like this, may I read or update or approve this document? Okay, you can use code like this, authorize. And then uh, if uh, you may not, then it will be uh, rejected. Returns for 403. And how about something like this, scoping? Scoping is give me all the documents that I can read. This is a bit harder, actually. I have to create a parser for this. So after uh, activities like this, I have a parser like this. Uh, maybe I will give uh, the source code later. And then it will return something like this. What to select, what to join, and what to filter. So uh, your controller is have, have an easier time to select all the necessary document for the particular user. So for challenge and improvement, uh, I think it's about performance. I still haven't touched this yet. And uh, also about the conflict resolution. What if there are two or more rules with different outcome? And uh, actually, if you come from enterprise background, you may heard something like XACML, which is the standard for fine grain authorization. This is actually nice, but it's very, very big and bloated. So that's why I think we need uh, something like what JSON is for XML, something that is easier to implement in our solution. And also, we can also do something like central, centralized authorization for big enterprise. So you have a one central server for storing all the rules. And you can use OAuth for helping the other application uh, request whether this document can be read or not. So for the conclusion, uh, we have four subsystem to consider. And then uh, the for format is very important. That's why there's even a standard in the enterprise, but I'm, I'm not using that for, for now. And my current focus is now how to make authorization, authorization system is less dependent on developer. And we want to give more power for users so that they may uh, enhance it themselves, like that. Okay. Thank you very much. This is the slides. Thank <clears throat> you.